Hi, my name is Gaurav Shah and in this video, I'm going to explain to you how access control works in Kubernetes. Now, if you're talking about access control, you might have seen this diagram before, which talks about the three phases of access control. Every request that you send to the API server of Kubernetes generally goes through these phases. The first phase is the authentication. Second is authorization. That's where even the RBAC policies are. Uh, that's the most common thing that you might be interested in. And the third phase is admission control, which is quite hazy for a lot of people, what that really is, right? But at the end of this video, you should absolutely understand what this all really means. I'm gonna take an interesting analogy here, right? Let's say you want to travel to a new country where you need, let's say, work authorization or so on and so forth, right? Uh, you may be traveling for either different purposes. My, my, you might be a tourist, you might be there for business, or you might be wanting to work there for long term, right? Now, before the country lets you in, first thing that you need to do is authenticate yourself. Prove that you are you, and the primary means to do that is your passport, right? So you get a passport, that's your authentication data uh, that proves that you are actually who you are and uh, that's the first means of trans you know, authentication. A lot of countries will also ask you to register your biometrics, uh, either your fingerprint or your retina, and that's another, the second level of authentication. You also need an authorization that's generally in the, the form of visa. That's what visas are for. And that's what decides whether you are permitted or authorized to work there, or you can just go there and spend your money as a tourist, uh, or you can bring back money as uh, by long-term working there work with work authorization. So you need different types of authorizations for different purposes of your visit, right? So that's your authorization. Authorization is your visa document typically. Now, just having an authentication, let's say passport and a visa, doesn't necessarily grant permission for you to enter into that country. You still have to go through the immigration process. You still have to go through the customs, right? That, those parts are part of the admission control. So they'll look at your, they'll look at your authentication data, they'll authenticate you, they'll look at your authorization, that's visa, and uh, based on various attributes, they'll decide whether they'll allow you to in enter or not, right? That's the first type of admission control. You also might have to go through the customs. In customs, they'll allow you to enter, but they might change and say that, hey, uh, you are allowed to take this and you're not allowed to take that or something like that, right? So those kind of things, that's part of admission control. Now, if you compare it with now this diagram that you, that you see in Kubernetes, now it should be clear to you what that really means, right? So first, you need to authenticate yourself. You need, you know, unless you are you, let's say a user or a group, Kubernetes is not allow, uh, going to allow you to send that request, pass that request through. So first, you have to authenticate. Now to authenticate, just like the passports and the thumbprints and uh, the biometric data, you have various means to authenticate yourself. Kubernetes gives you a lot of flexibility there. You can either use certificates, you can use bearer tokens, you can use just usernames and password, or you can authenticate against another external service like LDAP or even your Google account or GitHub account, right? So once you're authenticated, next phase is the, the RBAC policies. That's where authorization really, authorization can happen various ways. The most common way to do that is RBAC policies. RBAC policies were introduced in 1.6 version of Kubernetes, right? And our, with RBAC, it decides whether you are allowed to write, list, um, modify, patch, delete. So all of those are your access rights there. That's RBAC control, right? Uh, I'm gonna explain RBAC in another video, uh, you know, uh, separate video, uh, where we'll talk about what are the, con con you know, what are the con objects uh, which are, you know, which you need to know about in RBAC that includes subjects, rules, roles, uh, cluster roles, and role bindings, and so on, right? Uh, that's your authorization. Once you're authorized, to perform certain action, Kubernetes also has certain admission controls or you can configure certain admission controls. Now admission controls, the basic form of admission control can be just to allow or deny based on certain attributes, right? Uh, but most likely the admission controls are also allow you to mutate that request. What that means is 
um, it can change, it can put some attributes. Let's say if you have no, if you're going to use the persistent volumes, but if you have not defined which storage class you want, it can automatically modify that request and set the storage class for you. That is one form of admission control. The second form of admission control can be, you can allow the request, but you know, you can deny certain types of requests such as, you know, uh, in a privileged container, you can deny exec permission for the security reasons, right? So those form the admission control. Admission control is generally at the sort of, some sort of applications which decide uh, what to allow, what request to deny, and if need, need be, it will also modify requests. That's part of the three stages of access control in Kubernetes, starting with authentication, authorization, and then the admission control. Uh, I hope this analogy that I've given you makes things clearer and um, it's pretty clear to, uh, to you. I have uh, separate content on each of these topics, including authentication, authorization, and uh, access control. And um, that's about the Kubernetes three stages of access control. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video. If you like this content, do like, share and subscribe. You may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses. You could also visit us at schoolofdevops.com.